Welcome back, everybody. As Cher once said, if I could turn back time. <laughs> oh, it took me a few hours to recover from the end of the last episode. And if you haven't watched the last episode, it is a must watch. Go watch that first. Welcome all in, everyone. This is Laptop Pound, and this is the 1901 start date with the Montreal Expos draft to glory. That's right, building a championship from the bottom up only through the draft. No trades, no injuries, no free agent signings. Only myself as the manager trying to build them into a championship through the draft. And like I said, it was it was a rough episode at the end because we missed out on a great player. And I apologize. About five minutes into it, I was clearing my throat and boy, that was loud. <laughs> Somehow I missed that on the edit. So again, deeply apologize for that. But hey, how appropriate that was for that episode anyway, because I should clear my throat, not taking Otani with the first round pick of the Montreal Expos. I decided to wait because he was projected to go a little bit lower. The Expos instead took Scott Stranton with their first pick. And again, not a bad pick. I'm I'm not unhappy with Scott Stranton. But when you miss out on Otani, one pick before we were due to pick, yeah, that one, that's going to that's gonna stay with me for a while. We're going to compare those players as these seasons go on. Now, the good thing about Stratton, he's 17 years old. Otani was 22. So that's five-year development that we're going to get from Scott Stratton. So we can leave him in the minors for quite a long time. Don't want to bring him up too early. Didn't show you the rest of the draft because it was so disappointing not getting Otani. But we did take Juan Pierre with our second round pick. Two and a half stars. Really good contact. Good avoid K. Speed. Okay in the outfield. Round three went, went with Mark Tahan. Two star player. Third baseman. We're a little bit, you know, a little bit short on the corners of our team. Round number four. Shortstop Danny Santana was the pick. A little bit of developing still to go. 22 years old, two-star player. Round five, we took a chance on Bob. Bob Chance, one and a half stars, first baseman. Then we went with some pitching. Henry Schmidt, there weren't many starters left. He was the last starting pitcher. So why not? We took him in the sixth round. He might, he might end up being okay. Larry Bentoncourt was the next pick, another third baseman, one and a half stars. Then we went with a catcher, Mert. Mert. You don't see many guys named Mert. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> He's got gap power and home run and speed. Not much else. And then with our last pick, we went with John Gauchnauer. Actually, this is our second last pick. John Gash Gauschnauer, two-star player. He's actually improved a little bit since the draft. And then with round number 10, the last pick for the Expos went to Charlie Jones. And again, not expecting much out of Charlie, 23-year-old center fielder. That was the rest of the draft for the Montreal Expos. Let's move on to opening day of 2019. <laughs> Oh seven. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get it right. One of these episodes. We're in the nineteen hundreds, not the two thousands. All right, back at the start of the season. It is time to meet the team. Pitching wise, four pitchers that we drafted after the inaugural draft. Again, the senator, still one of the stars on the team. 26 years old. Looks like he's uh, fully developed in terms of his basics. His uh, pitch, screwball, sinker, looks like that has a little bit of room to grow. Although, you know, his age is probably going to limit him in terms of his growth. 
going upwards anyway, and Fritz Peterson. So we got a righty and a lefty, same two guys we've had for many years. Hopefully they can get us above 500. In the bullpen, we've got Roy Halliday, we've got Wheland, Thorpe, Darwin, Woodward, Merritt, and Morena. That's what we're going with. No longer one stars. We've got one and a half or higher. And I think in this upcoming draft, we might need to focus a little bit more on pitching because in the minors, we've got a few minor league guys, but you'll notice that the highest in AAA is a two star. The highest is Scott Stratton, our first round pick, 17 years old. He should be an ace if he develops properly. And nothing in rookie ball. So we might need to look to the pitching department in this upcoming draft. Hitter-wise, that's what we've been focusing on in our drafts. Look at this. All these players that were taken by the Expos in the last five or six drafts. We did bring up Paul Molitor. He is going to make his Major League debut, hoping that he'll contend for Rookie of the Year. Pretty much fully developed, except for his eye. 21 years old, so I don't feel like I've rushed him. Also, we've got, uh, I think, one more. Joe Garagiola decided to bring him up. He played in double-A ball last season. Uh, put him in triple-A, and he said, No, coach, I want to go up to the big leagues. So because he's fully developed, 20 years old, he's got some ability, we'll give him a shot. He was better than what we had. Our backup catcher, Mark Stewart, uh, again, just not cutting it, just doesn't have the bat or really even the glove. So Mark Stewart, you are going to be the backup catcher and that should be just fine until we get a little bit more competitive. Bo Jackson is our highest rated player in terms of overall four and a half stars and pleasantly surprised because we took Bo in round six. What a steal getting Bo Jackson in the sixth round. So he has taken off in Montreal. Cal Daniels, who we took in the first round a couple years ago, is again, doing okay. Still has a little bit of room for growth. 24 years old. And Joe Sewell, our first ever first round pick. We took him back in the 1901, the first kind of serious draft. 25 years old already. Fully developed and had an off season 250 last year, four star player. So, again, this season we're hoping for 500. Anything over 500 will be a victory. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's check out the news. The beginning of the season, always with the top prospects, the Montreal Expos, Paul Molitor in the number five slot. And that is it. We got Shot, Pelty, Klazuski, Paschal, and then. Paul Molitor. So our pitcher, Scott Stratton, isn't in the top 10. Neither is Otani. So whew, no Otani in the top 10. All right, let's go to the end of April. Now, this is what I like to see. Fritz Peterson, he's 39 years old. I didn't realize how old Fritz was, but improving on his uh, control rating. So Fritz, that control is now at 70. Probably going to be his last season, though. We'll probably move Roy Halladay up to the starting rotation, providing his stamina is uh, is there. Paul Molitor has improved now a five star. Look at that. Paul. Not hitting very well in his first month, but I'll take the uh, upgrade over the batting stats this early in his career. Joe Ward has uh, uh, regressed a little bit. Now a three star player. Joe Sewell has dropped as well, which again, starting to get a little concerning, but he did go back up to a five-star player. Just showed you recently he was four stars, hitting 308. I don't think he's going to regress too much. He, he should be fine for a few more years. Scott Stratton, our first overall pick. He's made a little bit of progress. He has uh, dropped in control to a 60, gone down in potential as well. So he's dropped half a star in potential. Pitching in double A, maybe he needs to go down to rookie. Uh, no, I, th I think he should be okay in double A. I just don't want him to be
become another potential bust. And Juan Pierre, our second round pick, playing in double A, hitting 395 and uh, seven stolen bases. So Juan Pierre off to a good career with the Expos organization. Okay, let's check where we are in the standings. Hopefully, hopefully. Whoa. Whoa. Where did that come from, Montreal? 14 and 5. Let's go. 14 and 5 on the season, leading the NL. Gotta love it. Cal Daniels, second in runs batted in in the league. Bo Jackson, tied for the home run lead. And uh, Ted Kennedy and Fritz Peterson both have seven wins on the season. Great start. This is our best start in our franchise so far. Eight and two in the last 10 games on a four game winning streak. Let's take a quick peek at the calendar. Are these uh, blowouts or are these close games? Uh, I think we're leaning towards more on the closer side. So excellent. We've won four in a row and uh, that streak is eight of the last nine games. Okay, keep it together, Montreal. One more month. Back on June 1st, Cal Raleigh moved up a little bit in potential. He likely will be our backup catcher for Joe Garagiola next year. Lance Carter, again, not really a, a player we're too concerned about. He's going he's gonna to be in the minor leagues probably most of his career. And Dom D'Alessandro dropping a little bit on the big league. So I think we might might move him down, back down to AAA. How's he doing on the team right now? Oh, he's hitting 365. So no, Dom, even though your uh, stats have regressed a little bit, we are going to keep you on the team. Montreal, are we still in first place? Yes, we are. 28-17 and 17, tied with the Chicago Cubs, the reigning Chicago Cub champions. And uh, let's just double check if they've got Otani in the minors. Uh, yes. So they got Otani currently in AAA. Uh, batting wise, yeah, he's 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 doing okay. So they're they're not rushing him. Twenty two year old Otani in AAA for the Cubs. All right, let's go back and uh, check on our players and the stats, pitching stats. What do we got here? We got uh, under three ERA for Kennedy and for Peterson. And look at this. This is dead ball at its finest. We played two months and there are one, two, three pitchers that have not got into any game action yet, including Danny Darwin. That concerns me. He's dropped to a two-star. That's what happens when you don't get your players playing time and you don't micromanage every game. This was a first-round pick back in 1904, and he's down to two stars. So, Danny, we've got to do something with you here to get you more playing action. We're going to use more often. And um, Roy's getting a lot of playing time. Yeah, well, we'll see if that helps a little bit because that's that's a shame. Let's go and take a look at our hitters and the stats. Probably doing pretty good because we are tied for first in the league. So we got Paul Molitor, rookie Paul Molitor, 307, 39 runs scored, leading the way on the team with 39 runs. Uh, 25 runs for Joe Sewell, Cal Daniels, Bo Jackson. You can see all the stats here if you want to pause it. But the guys that are supposed to be good are good. Joe Garagiola, the other rookie in the lineup, hitting 277. What is his fielding like? Not bad. Not bad for a rookie, just under one zone rating. Okay, let's go on to the beginning of July. It indeed is a happy Canada Day because we are into July and the Expos are one half game out of first place just behind the Philadelphia Phillies. We got Bo Jackson leading the way with six home runs and both our pitchers amongst the top in wins. Kennedy top in strikeouts and Roy Halladay has seven saves. 
stamina is at 40. Dead ball era. I'm going to put him into a starter role next season and see how he does. So, Roy, hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. You'll get your shot. Let's uh, take a look at the league leaders a little bit. Look at the entire league. So, we've got uh, Jimmy Wood leading the way with a 368 average. We've got, got uh, Charlie Keller, five stars, 41 RBIs. Dan Brothers, who was hoping we could uh, land him in the draft, but of course, a premier player goes right at the top, and we didn't have the top pick that year. He is playing really well. He's got a 455 OBP. Uh, stolen bases, we've got Mike Griffin, five star player with 82. Here we are three months into the season and 122 attempts, 82 stolen bases. Look at that speed. One day we will have a player with 82 stolen bases. Maybe it'll be Juan Pierre. All right, let's go to the beginning of August and then we'll do a little deeper dive. August 1st update. Again, player development, Paul Molitor. It's what I like to see. I'm glad that we kept Paul in the minors. We didn't rush him and bring him up right away. He is developing nicely. Four and a half star overall. Let's get him to five by the end of the season. So nice little update there for Paul Molitor. Little update for John Walsh. Uh, other big names, not really seeing anything Danny Santana let's go check in on Danny Darwin all right well he is getting a little bit of playing action boosting up his role a little bit still just a two-star player how about the streaks what kind of streaks are we seeing this year in 1907 anything from the Expos Joe Sewell six-game RBI streak uh, Danny Darwin still on his 12-game save streak. Hasn't had many opportunities this year. Uh, who else on the Expos here? Ted Kennedy, four-game consecutive K, or four consecutive Ks. And that's it in terms of the streaks. Okay, where are we? <sighs> yeah. The inexperience is starting to show, going deeper into the season. Players are getting tired. Probably not a deep enough bench to make up for it. So we are, although we're number one in runs scored, number one in home runs, we got players on the leaderboard offensively and pitching, but we are five and a half games back. So we are starting to fall, starting to falter. We're above 500. I want to be 500, otherwise it'll be a disappointment. We're far enough now into this franchise, seven years into it now, that we should be a 500 team. Let's go to September. September 1st. Disappointed Roy Halladay again has fallen. I don't mind little five movements down five, up five. I just don't want to see drop of 10 or drop of a full potential rating drop so Roy had a little bit of a, a poor month it looks like and dropped down but like I said we're going to give him the start next year what I want to see though is where are we in the standings are we still above 500 come on Expos we are still five and a half games back we haven't budged we haven't made up any ground at all Cal Daniels leading the league with 69 RBIs and tied with Bo Jackson with eight home runs. Gotta love it. He could be in contention here for player of the year in the National League. Roy Halladay tied with eight saves. Kennedy, most strikeouts and the most wins. Come on, Senator. Let's get you the Pitcher of the Year award. Let's get you the Cy Young. We've got about a month to go, and we are going to sim, I think, yeah, let's sim till the end of September. There's still a couple weeks in October. Let's do this. Let's go on a streak, Expos. Here we are. Stop the sim a little bit early. It is September 25th with about 10 games left in the season. The Montreal Expos 
are only five games out. Five games. Now, they do have a lot of teams to leapfrog. We've won two in a row, but I thought, let's slow play the rest of the season. We have five more games in September, three in October. So we're going to go game by game until we lose two. Because once we lose two, we're, we're going to be eliminated for sure. So game one against, it looks like uh, Brooklyn. Oops, we don't want to do that. Game one against Brooklyn. Let's finish the day. There's a loss now against Philadelphia. It is a loss. So Montreal should probably be officially be eliminated now. Uh, not quite. We are six games back with six to play. It's, it's pretty much over. So let's go to the playoffs. But we're going to get a higher draft pick. Higher up or lower down, or however you want to look at it. It won't be in the top 10. It looks like it's going to be about 12 or 13th in terms of our draft pick. But look at this. We are above 500 for the second time in this franchise. Take a moment. Soak it in. 82 and 72. Congratulations, Montreal Expos. A job well done. Taking a look at the leaderboard, what Expos do we see there Daniels, third in average. Bo Jackson, number five. Jackson, Daniels, highest home run, guys. <sighs> Love to see an expansion kind of team like ours putting some good talent on the board. Stats-wise, here we go. You can kind of see the stats. Nine home runs, 84 RBIs for Cal Daniels. Stolen base leader was Paul Molitor. Paul you have a really good shot at Rookie of the Year. If you don't win Rookie of the Year, I'm going to be disappointed. Not as disappointed as losing out on Otani, but still disappointed. All right, playoff time. Let's find out who takes the 1907 World Series. Will it be Chicago, the other Chicago team, or will it be the New York Giants? And it is the Giants in five games. Congratulations to the New York Giants, the World Series champions. As always, we'll take a quick look at the winning team, see who's in their lineup. Familiar names from the past. And the Expos, 450 score for the coach. Thank you. That's better than one. That's for sure. So the New York Giants won Beniquez, Alani Chisenhall, Jimmy Wood, Dykstra, Klingman, Atkins, Friedel, Drescher, Kerry Wood, Randy Wells, Jack Manning, and Calvin Maduro in the lineup. Taking a look at the history a little bit, I think this is the second championship for the Giants. Yes, it is. Giants have two. Athletics have two. Hopefully, we'll see the Expos up there soon. All right, playoffs are done. Time to go to the award winners. We will be back to see if we win a Rookie of the Year. Can the Senator win a Cy Young? Maybe Cal Daniels, the Pete Browning Award. Let's go check it out. It is that time. Let's go find out the award winners. Come on, hoping for at least one for the Expos. Into the American League, first of all, we've got John Ward, his third MVP. Also, his second Cy Young Award. So that guy, when was he drafted? John Ward taken number six overall back in the inaugural draft when we weren't at that time weren't trying to pick very good players Darren Erstad is the rookie of the year and for the first time in the franchise we have a reliever of the year and that goes to Matt Shoemaker okay let's check out the NL Jimmy Wood is your MVP for the World Series champs New York Giants. And look at this. Congratulations, Senator. You have made your way into the limelight. For the first time in Expo franchise history, at least in this sim, 
We have a Cy Young winner, Ted Kennedy, 43 wins, over 600 innings pitched, 341 strikeouts, an 8.1 war. Fantastic. And a second Expo is an award winner. It does go to Paul Molitor. Paul, you were sixth overall in the 1905 draft. I like it. And the second time a reliever of the year has been chosen, even though eight wins, three losses, six saves, 190 ERA, Joe Dobson. So the only award we haven't won, thanks to Pete Browning, is an MVP. We now have one Cy Young and one, two, three Rookie of the Year, one Reliever of the Year. So those are pretty good, pretty good numbers for the Montreal Expos. I like it. Okay, it's that time. Time to head to the draft. It is draft day. One of the most enjoyable times of the year. The Montreal Expos will be choosing number 12. That's our second highest, our lowest, however you look at it. Uh, we were 14th one year. That's when we took Danny Darwin with the first round pick. Now we're drafting number 12. Let's take a look at the players in this year's draft. Jimmy Williams, Suarez, Carlos Correa, George Davies, Carl Hubble is in the draft. Jack McDowell, Todd Walker, Jonathan Villar, Chubby Dean. Not seeing a lot of really big, high-profile names. John Antonelli. Is there possum whited, witted? So there's a few names, but... Probably the draft that we've seen the least big profile names. So we go down a little bit further. Nothing really standing out for me. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is not a very deep draft this year, which is good because we've got a pick at number twelve. So let's uh, go ahead. Let's start this draft. Find out who's there for Montreal. We go back to the draft log, George Davies. Yeah, it's George Davies had a really good career. Look at that, five-star player. Uh, only played four years. I thought he had a, a much longer career than that. I guess I'm mistaken. But yeah, he's going to be really good in this league. Pitcher, I'm thinking of the shortstop, George Davies. Maybe that's Davis. Carl Hubble went number two. Was kind of hoping he'd fall for us, but didn't really expect it. He's 23 years old already, too, so doesn't really fit in with our plans. We are projected to take Hardy Henderson, who went already. Hardy Henderson went to the Philadelphia Athletics at number nine. So let's see who's in the draft pool. Kind of rank them by potential. We've got a uh, draft shortlist set up. Again, kind of want to look for maybe a high-end pitcher if there are any. Uh, we don't want to go with relievers. Let's go with starters. And yeah, not many starters left. Klein, Grabowski, doesn't really have the stamina. 26 years old. Klein is 21 don't really like those uh, ratings, though. I mean, there's probably batters that are much better to choose right now than some of the guys we're seeing here. <sighs> that movement was a little higher. It's got really good control, good stamina. So, Brett, if you stick around one more round, I think uh, I think we might take you. But right now... I think we have to go to our batter list. So who do we have potential wise? We got quite a few. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to shortlist everyone that is a two and a half star or higher player. I'm going to sort by contact. 
Most of them are still there. So yeah, let's move these guys over to the short list. Now we'll go to the short list, 1907 batters. Okay, who do we like here? Well, we uh, do have a couple catchers in the system, but no one as good as what this guy could be. Wish that I was a little bit higher, but you never know. That could that could improve. Tim Anderson, current player, I believe, for the White Sox. Yeah, this is the current Tim Anderson on the White Sox. Shortstop, and let's take a look at our team needs. What do we really need here? Not a shortstop. We got Joe Sewell. So I don't mind upgrading first base. We're good at second. I don't mind third. So first, we need a corner infielder and probably a center fielder. Corner infielder, center fielder, and uh, a catcher if we have to. So we're going to take off Tim Anderson. And we'll take off the second baseman and shortstop simply because, again, we were really set there. Since injuries are not on, we're, we're pretty good there. Todd Walker. Oh, man, this, this is such a weak draft. Again, we're looking at the potential ratings right here. I think it's a pretty obvious choice, right? I think it's got to be Manny with that contact. Manny or Todd Walker. You know what? I, we're we're kind of still weak on catchers. Joe Garagiola can be a really good backup to Manny. So let's go and uh, take Manny with our pick chubby dean come on down to the montreal expos next up as we move into round three the talent level is really dropping off as i said this is an extremely weak draft so we're probably not going to do the whole draft on stream just because it's weak player pool not overly exciting. All my shortlisted players are now gone. So it's just a matter of kind of, I guess, quickly going through and taking the best player available. Let's start with the pitchers. See if there's anyone up here that might be considered. Yeah, all these pitchers are really bad. Because they're batters. All right, let's take a look at the pitchers. Who is left? Um, TJ Matthews looks decent. Not a starter, but he could, again, play a role in the bullpen. So I think, I think based on what we have left for the batters... I think we're going to have to go maybe with with two pitchers here. And I like a lot of green here. So we got a lot of green, but also this guy here with that movement. He's an interesting choice. All right, we're going to go with... Curly or TJ? We're going to go Curly. We're going to go Curly as our next pick. Curly Brown, round number three. Yeah, this is, these are kind of players you would see probably within the sixth or seventh round. Not this early. It was maybe the top five picks were really, really good. And after that, it's been, it's been pretty horrible. 
I'm not, I'm, I'm not making this up. It's been, it's pretty horrible with what's left. Paul Hopkins going to take a chance on you. You could be a really good bullpen guy. Look at that. Surprised you haven't gone yet. Paul Hopkins. On to round five, two-star players for pitchers, for batters. We're down to two-star players. Uh, let's look at batting potential. Yeah, nothing here. I, I Can I pass? Can I not take any of these guys? I don't think any of these guys are ever going to see any time with the big team. I guess we'll take Cordero. Position of need. After that, uh, who do we have for defense? Not much. Twenty-two-year-old. This is I, I. This is this is a challenge. Try to find. Uh, some sort of gem gap power. Yeah. All right. Well, I pretty much concede that none of these players will make the team. So I'm just going to take best available and we'll go from there. No pitchers are best available. They're, they have been picked over. So we're going to finish off by taking... Uh, I guess four batters, and we're just going to go gap power, I guess. Ted is one, two, let's go with oof, Cliff. Ninth pick, we got one guy left at 35, Jim. And now have a little bit of fun and look for the best name. What do we got for names? And we'll go all players here because they're all pretty horrible. <laughs> they're all really bad. Uh, okay, let's go with Frank, Ray, L, Leonard, Joe, Pedro. Uh, that's a catcher. We don't need a catcher. I, eeny, meeny, miny, Oscar. No, you're a catcher. We don't need a catcher. Way too many catchers. This is by far the worst draft we've seen so far. Manny. Don't need your home run power. Okay, Joe. Random player, Joe Hassler. You have been chosen for the Montreal Expos. Okay, that, that, <laughs> that will do it. We are done another year, a successful year in terms of the standings. The Montreal Expos come within just a, a handful of games of making it to the playoffs. Congratulations to the New York Giants. We will be back in the next episode to take on 1908 thank you guys so much for tuning in it is january 1st 1908 we'll see you next episode go expose